Okay, so after all of these very nice opening words, we need to get to work, right? Yeah. I don't know if people are ready. Alberto Palomo, CD of Spain. Are, do you think people are ready to roll? Okay. <laughs> then let's get started with this. Okay. Okay, so everyone looks ready. We're going to get started uh, with a panel that will be focused on the GaiaX journey and the 2025 strategy. And we are asking, please, to the moderator of the panel, uh, Catherine Justin, the GaiaX uh, Board of Directors Chairwoman and also Executive by President Digital and Information Management in Airbus, to please join us on stage to present the panelists. Thank you. <laughs> I hope you will have a great day uh, to, uh, in Alicante in, uh, for today and tomorrow. I'm really happy to be here. So uh, as uh, maybe uh, you know, I have been uh, elected as uh, the uh, chairwoman of the board of directors uh, a few months ago, uh, taking over from, from Max Harrens, uh, who is probably somewhere in the, in the room. Uh, and uh, so it's my pleasure to be with you today and to uh, kick off uh, this uh, meeting. Um, Maybe uh, just a few words, so as it has been said, uh, working for Airbus, I'm uh, leading the team uh, in charge of digital and information management. Uh, and um, uh, so if uh, you, uh, you remember well, I was there uh, last year also uh, giving a, a speech on what Airbus uh, was expecting. Today I'm here as a chairwoman of the board, so it would be a different, uh, different perspective that I will try to give you. Uh, so, um, if we go to the uh, maybe uh, the next uh, the next slide, uh, and I will uh, invite uh, now uh, Ulrich. Uh, we have uh, uh, who is uh, joining us a, f a few days ago uh, as the CEO of Gaia. -X. Good to see. You. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Catherine, and a very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe a few words on me, but before this, I would like to thank our hosts, Daniel, uh, president of the Hub, and uh, also Andres Perelio, who, uh, owning here this, uh, this beautiful building, an open building. We are an open ecosystem, so it fits very, very well. Uh, so, give your hand for our hosts here in Spain. <clears throat> I have a history of uh, 20, 20 years in digitization, uh, starting with Siemens, then uh, Atos bought part of the IT services of Siemens, so I worked uh, six years with Atos. And then we created, with some of you who are here in the room, the Fiverr Foundation seven years ago. At that time, Fiverr was not in the best shape. The technology, 500 million euro were invested, 300 million from the European Commission, 100 million from the private side of the PPP, which was called the Future Internet PPP. And at that time, already first venture capitalists invested into startups using Fiverr technology and uh, we created this foundation to bring the technology which was created in research projects to the market so to market to make it market ready and to start with the market adoption and uh, we made it to bring Fiverr to the world leading open source technology for smart cities so far more than 350 cities around the world are implementing their digitization, implementing their smart city based on Fiverr technology. With a lot of partners, we were able to create an open source developers ecosystem of around 8,000 people worldwide, developing, maintaining this open source software or using it to create digital solutions. And we created de facto standards, which became also de jure standards, so formal standards standardized APIs, standardized by Etsy, or also in other countries, in India, for example, 
five ACES standard for the data management in smart cities in India. And uh, my, my core competencies are from two verticals. During my Siemens and ATOS time, I've been working for and with customers from the manufacturing industry. So that's where my really core domain is. And within five air, the majority of the activities was in the domain of smart cities. And by the way, this is something which is driving me really crazy. I'm from Germany. And uh, Germany is leading when it comes to digitization of manufacturing processes. Industry 4.0 was invented in Germany. And on the other hand, talking to public services, Germany is way beyond uh, or behind countries like Spain, for example. Spain belongs to the top five countries in Europe when it comes to digitization of public services. And in the ranking of the European Commission, Germany is on position number 19. Yeah? Far more countries in front of us than behind us. And that, this drives me crazy. The same people in the same country are able to drive digitization in the manufacturing industry, but not in public services. Um, yeah, this is my, my experience. This is where I'm coming from. And always, it starts with the end user requirements. Uh, because otherwise technology doesn't make sense if it is not able to solve problems on the end user side, on the customer side. And uh, therefore, Catherine, I think it would make sense to have a look at uh, two such examples how Gaia X solves end user problems. So um, maybe uh, before we go to that, uh, yeah, we, we, and, <laughs> yeah, you, you, uh, I think we to be able to do so, we uh, or you, uh, because it's my ninth day at uh, the Gaia X organization, uh, but Gaia X is a bit older, and yeah. you, together with the team, achieved already a lot. And uh, before coming to the uh, end users, give us a bit an idea of what has been achieved so far. Yes. Uh, and uh, we'll try to give you uh, a little bit of um, uh, perception of what the journey has been uh, since uh, the inception uh, of, uh, of Gaia-X. Uh, so it's, uh, it's already more than three years uh, of, uh, of life, let's say. Uh, and the first key moment was uh, in September 2020 when Ursula von der Leyen mentioned uh, the Gaia-X uh, association and initiative as being one of the building blocks uh, of the digital economy uh, in Europe. So it was September 2020. Uh, then there was, uh, so the, the, the association was created and at the, at the beginning there was a lot of itchy discussion, let's say, on, okay, once we have said that we want this association, what do we want to do with it? So it was a lot about uh, what is the purpose? What is the structure? Uh, what are the deliverables that Gaia-X uh, will provide uh, to uh, European uh, association, European companies, European administrations? Um, and gradually, um, we, we have seen the data space project taking off. Uh, and with this rise of uh, data, data hub and data space project, uh, we saw also the network of GAIA-X members growing at the same time. Uh, and we saw more hubs coming. Uh, Daniel was mentioning the creation of, this, of the Spanish hub two years and a half ago. But there was many more. Uh, and we saw also many, many lighthouse projects coming to life. Uh, so was, uh, uh, the, the, let's say, the, the initial uh, step uh, of uh, the Gaia-X uh, story. In then, in September, and if we go to more recent uh, uh, activities, in September 2022, uh, the, the, uh, the teams of Gaia-X delivered uh, key documents. Uh, was uh, the, the first version of the policy and rules and the architecture documents that have been foundations uh, for the rest of the work uh, that we are doing. Uh, and more recently uh, was, uh, and got the first demonstration of that at the summit in Paris last year, uh, was uh, the Gaia-X clearinghouse uh, that was also uh, implemented. Um, where are we today? Uh, today we have more than 372 members 
uh, and we have 12 working groups uh, who are running, uh, gathering on a regular basis more than 295 experts working on the different topics uh, and helping creating the deliverables that I just mentioned. Uh, we also had recently uh, in, in 2023 two major events that were uh, getting uh, a fantastic feedback from the participants. Uh, one was in March uh, with uh, Marketix, uh, and thank you. I know that Roland is probably somewhere in the room, so thank you, Roland, for having drive, uh, driven that, uh, that event. Uh, the second one being, uh, and there was some very nice picture uh, during the, the film uh, at the beginning, was TechX. Uh, in May that was uh, supported by Pierre, so thank you, Pierre, for that, and I really like the shorts. Um, so um, then, uh, and last month, uh, maybe the, the, uh, the latest uh, achievement of GAIA-X that I would like to mention uh, is uh, the policy rules and conformity document um, and uh, the, um, uh, uh, the operationalization uh, now of uh, the GAIA-X uh, uh, clearing houses, uh, which is an extremely important step that has been achieved by the teams. Uh, we have the conformity also assessment uh, aligned with the ISO standards, uh, and we have defined the data exchange rules uh, and service model for uh, the GAIA-X framework. So all of this is our really critical achievements and critical deliverable that will allow uh, the data spaces and the data economy to really uh, accelerate in the coming, uh, in the coming uh, months and years. Um, today, as it has been mentioned by, um, by Ulrich, uh, we would like to celebrate um, two ecosystems uh, that have recently published uh, their go live uh, with the GAIA-X framework. Uh, and we will be very happy to uh, invite on stage uh, these uh, two market adopters. I know that there is many more, uh, and you can see some of them on the, uh, uh, on the slides here. Uh, and uh, I also want to make a special mention to uh, one of our day one uh, adopter member, uh, Aruba, and the very active Structura X uh, consortium. Uh, so I know that there is many, many more data hub, and we will talk about their success uh, also in the next two days. So uh, be ready for more announcements uh, coming in the, co uh, in the t next two days. Uh, so many, many thanks to all the contributors uh, of all these projects. Uh, you are making Gaia Hicks a reality. Uh, if you remember well, my, uh, my speech last year was about making our dreams a reality, and you are all making our dreams a reality. Now I'm very happy to uh, welcome on stage uh, Oliver Ganser, uh, who is uh, the CEO uh, of Catena X uh, Automotive Network. <laughs> Excellent. I thought I was last, but I'm first. Great. Thank you very much for the introduction, for the very kind introduction, and thank you for giving us the chance to speak for the third time to share the development, what Catherine and, and Uli just mentioned. Right? We have three years here, and we started with some scratches, with some ideas, and now we're here in Alicante and present a go live of two data spaces, which is pretty much phenomenal. And Catherine, I hope that there will be another one up there in a couple of months flying, right? So that's an important other industry that's to come. Ha! I knew I was second. <laughs> um, guys, we are flexible. Huh? We're flexible. Should I sit down or should I jump up? Take a seat. I take a seat. Take a seat. <laughs> <laughs> Join us here. And uh, with this, I would like to invite Sebastian to join us here. Um, to bring it in the right order. So Seb Sebastian Picard is um, CEO of the uh, Egg Data Hub uh, on agriculture, started in France and uh, we will hear what your requirements are and uh, how a data space is able to solve it. Yeah, 
Thanks a lot for welcoming us. And uh, you know, today I'm really proud of representing uh, 10 million farms in Europe, and uh, there are 500,000 partners uh, which work together in order to provide you food and wine every day. And so I think that tonight we will have a great time to, to share in conviviality food and great uh, Spanish wines. So first of all, why it is important to think about agri-food. I mean, my president is uh, Sebastian Windsor, he is a farmer in Normandy, and he has to deal in his everyday life with more than 30 sources of data in his farms. Why it is important for him to, to deal with this data? Because he has to increase his turnover in order to provide you organic food, to provide uh, better uh, productions, uh, for, for you as a citizen and consumers, but also to open, optimize his inputs in his, uh, against, uh, for uh, pesticide reduction and to use uh, fertilizer in the good way. The problem is that he doesn't have the power to deal with this data. And 10 years ago, the chairman, uh, Christian Lambert, which is the chairman of Copa Codlica, the European Farmers organization in the EU have a vision. She said that if a farmers need to deal with this data, he need to take the power. Not to, to, be, uh, to, to keep the data for herself, but also to share this data under that control. That's why Agdata was created by farmers organization eight years ago with the support of the French government in order to deal with this issue. And here you, have, you see all the stakeholders around uh, the farms and what we have done with Agdata. With Agdata, we organized, we are one of the first uh, data intermediary in France and maybe tomorrow in Europe, uh, according to the Data Governance Act framework. And the goal is to interconnect all the data from the farmers with their partners. And how we can do that? We can do that with five main pillars. First of all, you can see that we are sovereign. I mean that we use European and French technology. Second thing is, according to the DGR framework, we are neutral. That means that we will be controlled and regulated by RCEP in France, which is the national authority. Second point, third point is we will be compliant with all the EU regulation, DGR, Data Act, as a data intermediary. At the end of the four pillars, we, will be, we are recognized by EU Commission because we are the coordinators on the main Agri Data Space Consortium selected by EU Commission in order to make configuration about the common European data space for agriculture. One of our Spanish partners is in the, in the room and thank you again for his involvement in this great European project. And we are part of the data spaces support centers to represent the agriculture industry. And at the end, we are not using or developing our own technology. We, we use external technology coming from, techno from technological partners like, ba like Dawex, Orange Business, and Ian Group, which is the, the printing uh, company from IDs in France. We are not alone. Uh, what is important to succeed to uh, develop this successful platform is we have lots of partners, not only our shareholders, you can see on the left, with farmers' organization, but also the French government, with a public bank and investment. We have technological partners uh, which mutualize research and development investment. We have Europe, thank you, EU and our European partners, like Gaia-X. And at the end, we did users, final users, in order to develop value for the farmers and the agri-food sectors. And of course, you can see agro-suppliers from Germany, for example, Bayer, BASF. We can, uh, you can see some other livestock uh, companies and all that stuff. And at the end, data is not enough. We are data intermediaries, but all the value are created on the, in, with the process and treatment companies, and that's why we have also uh, an ecosystem of supply of uh, processing companies. And to finish, why it is important for us 
to uh, be part of GaiaX adventures. Because GaiaX is central for our architectures. I mean, you all know that farmers or farming industry benefit from the first European public policy, which is the Common Agricultural Policy. It's in 60 years. And we all know that even if the uh, policy is European, we need to be uh, in line with the national level, with the member states, and we need to interconnect national platforms. And that's why uh, I'm really proud today to announce you that we will develop after the summit. First of all, we are, uh, since last month, we are totally compliant with the current uh, GAIA-X framework. And uh, as soon as the next version of GAIA-X compli compliant uh, framework will be published, we will implement it. Why? Because we want to use GAIA-X uh, clean houses in order to interop, to interconnect all these national platforms in France, Germany, with the support of Fraunhofer, uh, the machinery industry, uh, the Belgium uh, platforms, and fine Finnish platform also, and other to come, like the Netherlands and Spanish and Spanish platforms. So here is the roadmap for next year, and that's why it is important that GAIAX finish the job with a clearing house and to implement it as soon as possible in order to to see you again next year and to say that data could be circulate could circulate on EU level really freely according to the new uh, regulation framework and according to the uh, market use. Thank you for your attention. Yeah, and, uh, and now, and I forgot to mention in my introduction, I grew up on combined harvesters, and that was the first business I was running, and then I had to decide to do that full-time or to go into the my, yeah, my, my digital business, and I decided for the second one, but I still have it a bit in my blood, yeah, to be honest. And I started then, uh, or did it in parallel, as a toolmaker as a, at an automotive supplier. Yeah? And now we are in the automotive industry, and uh, Oliver, now it's your turn to uh, explain what Catena X is doing. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, as Uli mentioned before, it's the year, and also Chris, uh, Catherine, it's the year of going live. So we have been working hard for the last three years to think about what this blurb, this idea means. So Katina X went live on October 16th. Um, we have our operating environment, and we will get to that in a second, also our first customers. But most and foremost, the data space alone is nothing. And Sebastian, you mentioned that we have a clearinghouse. That's the governance we're going to get from, um, from Gaia X. And we have our partners. And I think we have three clearinghouse partners right now available. I think this is a great thing to start the transformation. But we also have Eclipse and, and IDSA as our trust partners here. The next one is, and I think Uli mentioned that, it's important. You have to not just to create a technical environment. You mentioned it. You have your farmers. We have our industry problems in the automotive industry. And of course, we want to create customer value with that data space. Why is that so important? And Uli, you mentioned that as well. These are the people paying the bill at the end. So if there is no happy customer at the end, there is no data space, no data space, no clearinghouse. And this is the circle we have to eventually team up as partners. Now, who of you read Sherlock Holmes? One person read Sherlock Holmes, thank you very much. Um, there's nothing more deceptive than the obvious fact. Why? If you look at the data space setup, it's a lot of ideas, prototypes, single elements that work on its own. But the very important thing is only value is created when you combine everything, the three-year journey, and also from an industry side. It has to be organized, sorted. And some things do not work together. You have to say, I take this, but I ha cannot take this. And so what we really did in the last couple of weeks and months at Katina, we sorted all the puzzle pieces for our industry to build the data space. And who knows color schemes? So if you create the right colors on top of each other, it becomes white. And you create a blank sheet of paper that we all can use. 
to write something together will all create value, and this is the integration what Katina is pretty much doing. You're laughing. Is it right or wrong? It's right, pretty much. So the point is what we created is a trusted environment where we as an automotive industry can use standards, de facto standards, become national standards, and industry core. We have 80 standards for our business problems, sustainability, resilient value chains, and quality. We created legal documents, legal frameworks, policies, and was mentioned before as well, which is huge, not just to create technology, but I think you mentioned that what Spain is doing. What is the regulatory framework that we feel safe to exchange data, not within one country, but cross countries as well? And of course, we have kits. Why? Because you want to have providers of software that use the data space, and at the end again, the customer who's going to pay for it and use it and create business value. And we said we want a trusted identity, we want to have trusted um, data exchange, we want to have trusted services that work interoperably with each other, and a trusted governance, which is not a single person in there, but we as an industry are the governance body. And because we went live, I also would like to show you and present to you the first customers of the data space. We have all those here, and I think this is cool that it's not just German companies, and I think this is the beauty of what you've shown as well. We are not just Europe, we're not just Germany, we also have US companies in there. Where we join forces, this has to scale way beyond one region, one country, one union. It has to go really global because our value chains are global. The key element of that is really the regulatory frameworks in the back. You can take the screenshots, you can look them up on our internet site or take the QR codes. But I think the regulatory framework, the life cycle management, once we are operational, and I think this is something what the CEO of Gaia has to do in the next couple of months, once we are in operations, we are out of lab. We have to also fulfill the requirements of having an operational system running where customers rely on what we do. And that has to be maintained in a different space. Long story short, at the end, again, think about the customers who are willing to pay for it, for a service that is not a data space, but a data space is the enabler to create customer value. And I think this is a key element, what we will do. And I think um, you will hear about that also later today. This is not something, global, uh, not something regional, it's global. And I think we team up right now with Katina and Manufacturing X. And Sesame, I think the people are in the house today also from others. We have to think as a global endeavor, not a European, but a global endeavor. Only then we are successful and we have to move faster. And Matthias, thank you very much for your contribution because last year we stood here and said, we want to have cross data space interoperability. Right now you saw data spaces singular. I think in the mid to long run, those data spaces with SSCN or the US colleagues or the Japanese or Chinese colleagues, we have to think in data space interoperability. And I think this is the next chapter we will gonna look at. Thank you very much for the time. Thank you, thank you very much, um, um, uh, Alec, um, Sebastian and Oliver, for uh, sharing your experience and, and sharing the already achievements that uh, you, have, uh, you have reached. Uh, just maybe a few words before I hand over to... Uh, um, I can't make it work anymore. Normally there is a slide. No, okay, not coming. No. It's not coming. Okay, that's that's not. Um, it's okay. We will we will manage it. Uh, so I just wanted to emphasize what Oliver just said, which is about uh, the uh, interoperability, and we will have in the future more and more data space coming. Uh, you were mentioning uh, aerospace, but uh, we have uh, other industry, mining, energy, uh, and. There will be a need also to exchange information across the data spaces. Uh, so, uh, and in particular, we have a few use cases where uh, we, it will be about the traceability of materials. And the, and the materials are going not just to aerospace industry or not just to automotive industry. They go to all the industries and we will have to ensure that traceability uh, in the future. We will have uh, also in terms of 
uh, sustainability. We have to be in a position where we will be able to report on the CO2 emission, on our consumption of energy, our consumption of water. And again, this is not specific to one industry. So we will have to exchange information with um, energy providers, uh, with utilities providers. Uh, and also for the smaller organizations uh, who are working for several industries, the, the establishment of standards is critical because they will have with one set of standards the ability to collaborate with multiple industries. Uh, and I can take one example of uh, Mechacron, for example. They are working for aerospace industries. They are working for automotives. They are working uh, for uh, energy uh, industries. They are providing uh, metallic parts. And they need one, one unique set standard to communicate because otherwise for them, with their size, they just cannot afford to develop as many systems as they have customers. So that's a value that Gaia-X will provide in the future, is also uh, the interoperability inside the data space, but also outside and across the data spaces. So keep that in mind, because I think that it will be one of our next journey uh, in, uh, in the coming years. And now I'm handing over to Ulrich, who will talk a little bit about the strategy. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. And yeah, it's our mission, it's our vision to enable trusted, decentralized digital ecosystems. And uh, I hope it became a bit clear by the two examples that what we did in the past to create, as you can see here on the left side, one-to-one -one interfaces between partners. That was not sufficient anymore 10 or 15 years ago. And we started to create digital platforms. Did it in industry, PLM systems are such digital platforms. We did it in smart cities for smart city platforms, always connecting a few to a few and connecting already known sources of data and uses of data. And the next step are the data spaces. Data spaces connecting many to many and also enabling not known sources of data and users of data to connect to such data spaces because we are using standards. Yeah? We are using the same rules to apply and it's possible to automatically onboard to such data spaces. So it is the next step in our development. And therefore, as Gaia-X ecosystem, we make it happen. Our mission is creating the de facto standard aligned with European values by developing a set of policies, rules, specifications, and a verification framework. Because we need to make sure that the different data spaces are applying to the rules, are able to interconnect with each other. And uh, this is the core of the activities of Gaia-X. And I think here in this room, I don't need to explain the X of Gaia-X with the basis in a federated cloud infrastructure. So the infrastructure ecosystem at the bottom, then the federation services in the center of the X, and finally on top, the data ecosystem the data spaces, and also using this data, and we will come to that a bit later. And uh, it's getting more and more clear that Gaia-X will not be able to manage all of this alone. And the good thing is, especially here in Europe, we have several initiatives, several organizations working into the same direction, having the same targets, and that is the reason why already two years ago, on uh, September 23rd, 2021, it was decided by the four presidents of the four organizations, you see a bit smaller there, the Big Data Value Association, the 5F Foundation, Gaia-X, and International Data Spaces Association to form the so-called Data Spaces Business Alliance with the ambition 
to work closer together, to create one architecture. And uh, this has been published in version 2 in April of this year, the so-called technology convergence of the Data Spaces Business Alliance. The Alliance has a booth over there, so you can get more information on that during the breaks. To be able to talk with and to speak with one voice to the market, because that's very important. Most of us here know Gaia-X and no data spaces, but people from outside looking at it are asking, to whom shall we go? What is the right way to go? And here it is a target to agree on one common way. And also to utilize more than 100 hubs, because each of the four organizations have a hub organ uh, um, ecosystem, and we are here hosted by the Spanish Gaia-X hub, but there are also IDSA hubs, Fiverr hubs, and um, BDVA calls them iSpaces, but uh, similar concepts. So we are combining more than 100 hubs, which are very important to, on the one side, gather requirements from the market, from the end users, but also to transfer the results, to transfer the messages to the market. And all four organizations are member-driven organizations combining more than 1,000 members. And we agreed here in this Data Spaces Business Alliance on this uh, layer model based on standardization, certification, and tools, then to have the data spaces stack, and on top, the business layer. And we can position the four organizations in uh, these four layers, GAIA-X and IDSA, more on the standardization, certifications, tool part, Fiverr, together with other open source communities like the Eclipse Foundation, um, but uh, several others who are contributing to the creation of solutions on the data spaces stack. And the name stands for itself, the data spaces, no, the Big Data Value Association, sorry, um, on the business layer creating value out of this data which are managed by data spaces. This is the setup and one important toolbox which was created in the Data Spaces Business Alliance and then adopted also by a very important project uh, which is called the Data Spaces Support Center and uh, Boris Otto is here, he is heading this uh, project which got the mandate from the European Commission to define the frame conditions for the creation of interoperable data spaces. And these are the different so-called building blocks, which are necessary to create interoperable data spaces. Divided into two large parts, at the bottom, the technical building blocks, again in three columns, data interoperability, data sovereignty and trust, and also data value creation, so the ability to monetize data. And on top, the organizational and uh, business building blocks, so what is necessary to create the government's framework for the creation of interoperable data spaces. And each of the four organizations have their strengths, contributing different building blocks to this set. But again, these are four organizations who have uh, joined forces, but uh, we have very strong partners also in there. Um, for example, I share, I see Ra here, um, My Data Global, organizations with whom we are working very close together to fill these building blocks. And uh, it is important not only to specify the building blocks, but to instantiate them. For example, just taking one data exchange here on the left, it is clear we need APIs, we need standard APIs, but it is not sufficient to state we need APIs, we need to agree on which APIs to use, because otherwise we will not be able to create this interoperability. And this is uh, a task in this joint endeavor 
of the Data Spaces Business Alliance together with the Data Spaces Support Center uh, to pave this way and to create these frame conditions. And this brings me to um, one point to the Gaia-X strategy in a nutshell. The slide is empty, um, but there is content in there, so it's animated. Um, we have it, we have structured this strategy into four main areas, four main building blocks. And the first one is, and I hope this becomes clear also by the presentations of um, Sebastian and uh, Oliver here, it all starts with the end user requirements. And uh, this is very important for us to get more market adoption that we are able to address the requirements of the end users. So therefore, it is relevant to increase the number of reference stories. And we heard two very excellent ones. We have a lot of booths here around where you can see others. Uh, you heard about the Lighthouse projects. And it is important to transfer these messages. So Gaia-X-based solutions are reality. They are in place. They are solving customer requirements. And it is uh, also important to increase our collaboration with policymakers, supporting and advocating the usage of data spaces. And, and uh, Oliver, you mentioned it uh, a bit uh, for the usage of data spaces. We need cloud service providers. We have a lot of cloud service providers here in the room. We have a lot of cloud service providers um, in Europe. And for certain domains, like automotive, where you have global supply chains, we are also working together with the global hyperscalers. Yeah? So trustful data spaces together with service providers, including the global hyperscalers, but maintaining our sovereignty, maintaining the Gaia-X rules, which we are together defining. These rules are the framework for our trustful data management in the ecosystem. And I mentioned the hubs before. Hubs are important, and hubs will also support us in the uh, end-user adoption of these technologies. Second, to be able to do so, we need market-ready technology. Yeah, that's part of the task of Pierre, sitting over there yeah, in, with the uh, technical colleagues. But also, and I hope it became clear, it is our strategy to further increase the collaboration with the Data Spaces Business Alliance, but also with the uh, free and open source software ecosystems, which are providing these solutions. And European Commission-funded projects, as well as projects funded by the member states, and we have two good examples here, yeah, help us to develop software, help us to fill white spaces in the list of building blocks I showed to you before. And here's also one of the um, European-funded projects, which is about to start, which is called Simple. And uh, Piers will be here, Piers Odanohu will be here tomorrow. And uh, we agreed on a close collaboration also for the Simple projects um, to work into the same directions. And Simple has simply the task to fill the white spots we identified and provide solutions for this. Yeah, and uh, all um, needs to be done on technology, so providing technical deep dive sessions and uh, to validate the solutions against our rules. This is an important part. 
And uh, Oliver, you mentioned it also, globalization is very important. So intensify the partnership with our existing partners, with new partners who have a global reach, also outside of Europe. See here uh, colleagues from uh, NEC, for example, from Japan. Uh, it is very important also to increase these uh, partnerships. Also here, hubs will play a role. We have not only hubs in Europe, but also outside of Europe. And um, we need to further increase our marketing activities. We need to spread the word about GaiaX in the world to make more and more people aware of the benefits of it. And here also analysts will help us. Um, so we have a, the target to further increase our relationship to gardeners, to the IDCs of this world who are bringing recommendations also to their customers and they need to know about Fiverr, uh, not Fiverr, sorry. Uh, it will take a bit, so my ninth day with Gaia X. Um, finally, this only works with a ecosystem, so it is important to grow the ecosystem, to grow the membership of Gaia X, to create value for our existing members, but also to convince new members to enable a static growth of our ecosystem and also of the membership of the Gaia X AISPL. And all of this driven by the team of the Gaia X AISPL with the ambition to drive growth and um, do it with a service oriented team and to provide thought leadership to the market. So that's the strategy for the next two years, in a nutshell, just on one page, not 20 pages, because nobody would read 20 pages, but uh, maybe you can read one page and remember some of the topics of this strategy. And you will see this slide uh, during the next months and years uh, quite often. So, um, that's it for the opening of this uh, session, after the welcome of our hosts here, um, the presentation of Catherine is our new chairwoman of the board of the directors of the GaiaX ecosystem. Two excellent um, lighthouse projects, uh, two out of a set of lighthouse projects which show the real world adoption of GaiaX based technologies. And we are about to uh, see more of this during the day. We will have uh, a session on uh, Manufacturing X, uh, which will uh, be a global initiative from the very beginning. We have international guests here from Japan, from US, uh, which will participate. Um, but also the politi political commitment from the Commission and uh, from European member states will be demonstrated during the two days. And we have sufficient breaks, I hope sufficient breaks, to enable networking. Because this is a second part, maybe, maybe even, even a more important part than uh, listening to presentations, to uh, exchange, to learn new people, to learn what is possible already, which experiences were made, and uh, to find new partnerships, new friendships, and uh, therefore, thank you very much for your uh, participation here today. It's a full room. We have uh, more than 550 registrations, so more than last time. We are growing also by uh, participants in this uh, event. And uh, with this, I would like to hand over again to our moderator uh, to invite the next speaker on board, and which is something which is very important. With the creation of data spaces, we are breaking down data silos or we are opening data silos, we are making data available. But the data spaces as such are not creating too much value. It is important to use the data which are provided on these data spaces. And I think we will get an idea in the next presentation. Thank you.